said. Yeah, well, it's not enough, Glenn said. Arlie marched down the hallway like he owned a Frost Creek Middle School. Anyone who stood in his way got shoved into a locker. Watch it, Arlie said, slamming Emil into a wall. Emil whipped around to face Arlie. You got something to say? Calm down, he's just trying to pick a fight, ignore him. I'm talking to you, fat boy. Don't do it, don't fall for it, Emil started to walk away. But Arlie grabbed Emil and spun him around to face him. They stared each other down. Arlie drew back his fist just as Mr. Derek came out of his science class. What's going on here? The teacher demanded. Nothing, Arlie said. Letting go of Emil. Get to class, Mr. Derek said. I'll see you later. Like 
a storm cloud waiting to burst as they ate. After supper, Rosemary cleared the table and muttered as Francis and, Mia and Emil moved the furniture in the living room to one side to make space. She glanced into the living room, then trudged to the kitchen to do the dishes. I'll show you some moves that have kept me out of the hospital more than a few times, even saved. your job really that dangerous. Not if you know how to handle yourself, Francis lied. Francis went over basic defensive moves. Holds and pressure points, and we all picked up the basics with ease, but the rest gave him a little trouble. They practiced over stupid it 
was to John Darley like that. No, Emil lied as his quivering hand turned the dial of his lock. Bill shook his head. Good luck with that denial. Then they walked the glass. Emil couldn't think of anything other than watching the clock during his glasses. It's ticking down to my execution. Maybe the governor will call and I don't know what 
what's happening with you, if it's something at home that's causing it or what, but I think you need to talk to a counselor about it. I'll go with you if you want. Why? For moral support. No, I mean, why do you care? Because I think you need a friend more than you need abuse or punishment. Harley eyed him cautiously. Whatever. I'll think about it. That's all I ask. Chapter 4 I was shifting. It was a shift change at Larson Prison, and Francis Soren came on duty. The start of this shift was always boring. Watching him make clean wasn't the most exciting thing to do, but that was his assignment. The inmate put every ounce of energy into doing his job. He had mopped the entire deer, taking great pains to clean every inch of the floor. He made it look effortless, and the floor shone when he was done like a model inmate. He was meticulous about his assigned tasks. Warning officer Scorn, Zorn. The inmate said cheerfully while wringing out his mop. How's the weather today? All clear, Francis said, looking at the window being belted with rain. Not a cloud in the sky. Excellent. I'm finished mopping. Could you unlock the supply closet for me? Sure, Francis mumbled. What's wrong? The inmate raised his eyebrows. You don't seem very happy today. As if you really care. The officer just grunted as they arrived at the supply closet. He unlocked the door and entered before the inmate. He checked the room to make sure they were alone. I'm not very happy. He grabbed the inmate by the collar and pinned him to the wall. I'm not happy being your damn drug dealer. I'm not happy playing these stupid games. I'm not happy risking my job and my freedom for a piece of trash like you. But you came to me, the inmate choked out. Francis paused and loosened his grip. I never came to you for anything. Sure you did, the inmate smiled. You were complaining about that bitch of yours spending money you didn't have. You roped me into your drug ring. I offered you some extra money. You made your own choice. I had no choice. My wife was bankrupting us. So I helped you. And you got your drugs. And you got your money, so what's the problem? Francis stared at him in silence. What would Emil think of this old man if he knew? Of his old man if he knew? Did somebody rat you out? No response. The inmate started laughing. Did you grow a conscience? Francis' blood began to boil. He grabbed the inmate by the neck. So you want out? my two weeks notice. <laughs> no problem, the inmate choked and clutched his throat. Francis eyed him warily and then slowly released him. Can I at least have my last shipment? Yeah, it's over there with the pile of rags. The inmate found several bags of white powder. As usual, they were tied together to form a belt so he could easily hide them under his clothes. All done, he said. The money will be wired to your account as usual. Just as pretty as you please. Would you like fries with that? Francis thought a bit bitterly. He nodded to two, unlocked the door. A sharp pain shot through his back, and then his chest looked down to see a sharp piece of plastic sticking out of his uniform shirt, which was turning from gray to dark red. As he collapsed to the floor, the inmate ripped the shank back out and cleaned it off with one of the rags. Consider that your severance pay. Nobody quits on me. Francis opened his mouth to try to call for help. Try to try calling for help, but all that came out was a bloody gurgle. Without even looking back, the inmate stepped into the hallway. He closed the door and strolled back to his cell, whistling a happy tune as he went. Francis saw of his own blood for nearly two hours before 
pause, turn, or break his stride. Rosemary's anger at Emil had helped her regain her composure. She followed, followed him on the side of the road in the car. They traveled this way for nearly a mile, looking every bit like the world's smallest parade, until they reached home. Emil ran inside. Slowly it began to sink in. He turned and 
slam. 
He quickly put the razor back into the cabinet and went to his room, not wanting to talk to his mother. underscore writer underscore